Hi, this is Matthew with Another World Terraria. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create springtail cultures. First, I'll quickly share some basic information about springtails, and then we'll jump right into the tutorial. Springtails, which are sometimes referred to as springs, are tiny creatures which were once considered insects, but they're now classified as hexapods. There are many different species which vary in size, appearance, and habitat, but in general, they're about an eighth of an inch long or less, and they live in wet and humid conditions with decaying matter. They're found almost everywhere in the world. Springtails consume decaying matter and mold, which keeps the environment and the plants healthier. They also burrow in the substrate, which helps keep it aerated and may stimulate healthier plant growth. In my opinion, they add interest and they can be fun to watch, along with one of my other favorite microfauna, the dwarf white isopod. Springtails are really easy to keep. I have a number of different species living throughout my plant collection and terraria. The ones I'm going to be using for this tutorial are a large white temperate species. I like them because they reproduce extremely fast and their larger size means that they can eat more decaying matter which is going to help prevent mold outbreaks. Here are the key components for creating a springtail culture. Container. You'll want your culture container to have the following qualities. It needs to be waterproof, so you're going to want to use glass or plastic. It needs a securely fitting lid so it contains the humidity and the springtails. I prefer containers which have screw-on lids so if you knock over the container, it's not going to spill out. It also needs to be large enough to support huge amounts of springtails because they breed really fast, so you're going to get a large population pretty quickly. And you're going to want the container to be tall enough that when you open it, they're not going to be able to jump out. If you're using deli containers, I would avoid the shorter ones and go with a taller style. I use these containers which I bought at Tap Plastics. In my opinion, they're the perfect container for springtail cultures. The plastic is crystal clear, so it's easy to see everything going on in the culture. The plastic is relatively rigid and doesn't buckle or flex when you pick it up. The square model has a narrower side with a grip, so it's easy to pick up, although the cylindrical model does have a bit more volume and the lids screw on, giving added security as mentioned earlier if you accidentally knock over the container. Substrate. There's one substrate that is by far the best choice and that is charcoal. The benefits of charcoal are that it lasts practically forever and doesn't break down. It doesn't get moldy, which is important because the culture conditions are extremely wet, humid, and stagnant. It absorbs and locks in harmful substances, which keeps the culture fresher and healthier. It can stand in water without any problems, which is good because about a third or a half of the substrate is going to be underwater. And it has a large surface area, so it can sustain large populations of springs in a small area. I use horticultural charcoal, which you can buy at home improvement and garden stores. Water. You'll keep some water in the container to maintain the required humidity and moisture levels, as well as to provide a method of distributing springtails into your terraria via pouring out and having them float across the surface. I prefer to use distilled water because it doesn't have any chemicals or minerals in it which might cause problems in the culture. Food. I feed my springtails mostly vegetables such as zucchini and squash, as well as a few freeze-dried bloodworms and occasionally specialized foods like rapashi bug burger. How to make a springtail culture. Some people like to rinse the charcoal um, using like a strainer or something like that and pouring water over it to get the charcoal clean. Um, I sometimes might do that, but in this case I'm not going to do it because there are already springtails in this charcoal. Believe it or not, the charcoal right out of the bag that I purchased had springtails already living in it, some species that's already in there, which is kind of cool. Now you're going to put the charcoal into the container to the desired depth. I'd recommend about 3 or 4 inches on an average size container. The more volume of the charcoal that you have, the more of a population of springtails it's going to be able to sustain. But remember that you want to use a container that's tall enough that the substrate isn't going to be too close to the top because when you open the container lid, the springtails can jump out. Got a little pro tip for you here. It's just kind of an all around tip for working with substrates and terraria stuff. I made my own flexible funnel. I took one of these taller uh, deli containers and I just took a, an X-Acto knife and very carefully cut you know, a shape out. So it is essentially like this. As you can see, it kind of has a scoop and it's really flexible. So you can scoop things up and then you can funnel them into 
narrow jars. So let's go ahead and use that to add the charcoal into our culture container. So I'll just dump a bunch into this. And then as you can see, it's easy to just fold that and then I can just dump it right in like so. Now, let me make sure I get the right depth here. Next, we're gonna add some distilled water. I'm gonna fill this to about one third or one half of the depth of the substrate. You don't want too much water because you want some surface area above the water where the springtails can actually live in there. Next, we're gonna add the springtails from our existing culture. So you might have a starter culture, or in this case, I have an existing culture that has a whole bunch of springtails in it. And additionally, since I didn't quite have uh, as much charcoal as I'd hoped, I can dump some of the charcoal from this container into here as well, because there's quite a bit in here. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage. Got a good amount of them in here, and they're jumping all around. I'm going to just carefully pour some of them in and it's just, they just float on the surface of the water. And I'm gonna shake this and get a bunch of the water in there. And then I'm going to take a spoon here and scoop some of this. I'm probably gonna lose a bunch of springtails. They're probably just gonna fly everywhere. They jump all over the place. Don't do it guys, stay in the container. All right, so we've got our springtails in our new culture. I'm just gonna add a very small amount of food here, and then I'm gonna throw the lid on. I'm going to place the springtail culture in a relatively dark environment, away from direct light and extreme temperatures. I'll place it by my other springtail cultures on my microfauna rack next to my dwarf white ice pod cultures as well. Here's a few tips to get you off on the right foot. Start off with less food when the culture is young because there won't be as much of a population to eat the food. After they've bred a bit and their numbers explode, you can increase the amount of food you give at each feeding. Don't add more food until the existing food is gone. I would recommend keeping at least two, preferably three or more cultures, so you always have plenty of springs for all of your terraria and plants. In addition to giving you a significant population, it will also serve as an insurance policy in case any of the cultures die off for some reason. When you have multiple cultures, you can use springs from one culture while the other cultures increase in population. Then move that culture out of circulation and start using springs from one of the others. This way you'll have a minimal impact on the cultures at any one time. When you want to add some springtails to your terraria or plant bins, you're going to carefully pour some water out of the culture into the plant container or terrarium, and the springs will float out on the surface. After a few small pours or one larger pour, you're going to want to replace some of that lost water.